Nero is at his seaside villa when the fire breaks out. Flames erupt in the Circus Maximus. Rome's largest sporting venue forms a mile-long track of timber, and its seats provide the ultimate fuel. Within minutes, flames spread the entire length of the circus and jump to the nearby Palatine Hill, the Beverly Hills of ancient Rome. Fire climbs Rome's hills and descends again into her valleys. The city is an inferno. People were running out of their houses, apartment buildings, screaming, looking for each other, asking for help, trying to help people who are in need of help, looking for a way out in the middle of this incredible noise in the streets that were filled with smoke, not being able to orient themselves where they were and often running right into danger and flames and destruction. The fire dies down after six days. The city is devastated. Many think the worst is over. But the blaze ignites again. Flames spread from neighborhood to neighborhood, devouring everything in sight. Rome burns for nine days. The devastation is massive. The fire of 64 is an outstanding event. It's a rare event. Fires before then were frequent in Rome, but not on this scale. Most of the city is destroyed. It has to be almost rebuilt totally. Three of Rome's 14 districts are completely destroyed. Seven are reduced to mangled ruins. Only four remain intact. It's the perfect opportunity for a builder, too perfect. Rumors begin to spread that the fire is an opportunity the emperor created for himself. Legend says that as Rome burned, Nero sat on his balcony, singing the fall of Troy, with the city suffering as his backdrop. But like many accounts of Nero's life, it's hard to separate fact from fiction.